This example says find the coordinates of the point of intersection of the unit circle and a 30 degree angle. Now this doesn't have to be perfect when you draw it, which I would recommend that you do on a piece of paper, but you do at least need to know which quadrant that this is located in. So just a quick review, this is always your starting point. This is zero degrees. If you make a full rotation, it's 360 degrees. Now, if I'm going to draw a 30 degree angle, I need to start at this point. And since this is a positive 30 degree angle, I'm going to move counterclockwise from this point. Really, the one thing you need to know is that 90 degrees is up here. So that means 30 degrees must be in this first quadrant between 0 and 90. Again, it does not have to be perfect. As long as you know which quadrant it's in, you're fine. So I've got my 30 degree angle. What I'm going to do, which is going to be helpful for any problem like this, is I'm going to take this point, which is what I'm trying to find, and I'm going to draw a line straight down to connect it with the x-axis. The reason I'm doing this is because I now have a right triangle. And if you remember your special right triangles, if one of them is 90 and one of them is 30, the last angle must be 60. Now I can use my special right triangles rules to figure out this ordered pair that I'm looking for. So the shortest side of your 30, 60, 90 which is across from the 30 degree angle is just labeled S, that's side length S. The longer leg, so the base of this triangle, is S times the square root of three, and the hypotenuse of a 30, 60, 90 triangle is two S, or two times S. Now, if you remember one thing about the unit circle, well, a couple things about the unit circle. We know that the center is here at zero, zero. And if I go from the center to any point on the outside of the circle, it's called my radius. And the radius of the unit circle is one. Well, if I start at the center and I go to the point that I'm trying to find, I'm at the hypotenuse, which must also be one. So right away, I know one of my side lengths. The hypotenuse is one. If you use your special right triangle rule, we know that the hypotenuse is two S and it's also one. So if I move the two over to the other side, I know that the side length S is one half. So now I have that shortest side. I know that it's equal to one half, which leaves me with S times the square root of three to figure out. And this is not incorrect, one half square root of three, but you will see it written as a single fraction. If you multiply straight across and you put the square root of 3 over 1, you get the square root of 3 over 2. So now I do have enough information to find my ordered pair. Remember, this is 0, 0 in the middle. If I trace the base of this triangle, I've gone over to the right, square root of three over two. If I, if I trace the height of this triangle, I'm going up one half. By doing that, I arrive at the ordered pair. So it must be square root of three over two 
one half. Okay, I moved to the right square root of three over two, which would be an X value. I moved up one half, which would be a Y value. So that's your answer. I'm going to take this one step further, even though the question didn't ask for this. Okay, we are talking about a 30 degree angle here on the unit circle. If you are asked for the cosine of 30 degrees, it's just telling you to find the x value at 30 degrees. Well, we have the ordered pair. Our x value is square root of 3 over 2. Similarly with the y value, that would be sine. So the sine of 30 degrees is 1 half. If you are asked for tangent, sometimes that takes a little work, which we're going to do here. The tangent is always y divided by x, which is the same thing as sine divided by cosine. So that means we have 1 half divided by square root of 3 over 2. Now this is going to turn into a little algebra review because I cannot leave a fraction like that. If you have a fraction divided by another fraction, you can keep the first one, change division to multiplication, flip the second one. Multiplying straight across gives us 2 over 2 square root of 3. 2 over 2 reduces to 1 over 1. So my fraction is 1 over the square root of 3. Now we actually have to do one more thing. You cannot leave a radical in the denominator. So what we're going to do is rationalize the denominator. This is a pretty easy process. Oops, not equals. What you do is you multiply the denominator by itself. Whatever you do to the denominator, you have to do to the numerator. Otherwise, you're changing the entire fraction, which we don't want to do. So the numerator becomes the square root of 3. The denominator is just 3. If you multiply a square root by itself, you're left with whatever was inside. The reason for that is because this is just equal to the square root of 9, which is 3. So that would be the tangent. 